Chapter 16. As the sun began to sink below the mountains, Clay dozed off, still worrying about his friends. He woke up to the smell of burnt prey and the growling of his stomach. Two of the moons were high overhead, while the third was a dim ivory blur glowing behind a distant peak. His eyes were finally starting to adjust to the bigness of everything. This view was just about the opposite of what he'd grown up with under the mountain. Clay twisted his head toward the smell of prey behind him and nearly toppled off the ledge in surprise. Peril was perched on the far side of his stone platform with her tail tucked around her legs and her wings folded in as if she were trying to make herself as small as possible. Even so, there was only about a length of a dragon tail between them and Clay could clearly feel the burning heat coming off her scales. It wasn't a warm basking heat like Sunny and Dune had. It felt like standing too close to an erupting volcano. Oh, good, finally, she said. She nodded at a lump of meat on the rock between them. I brought you something. Different. Well, I made the guard let me bring it. I hope you don't mind that it's a little crispy. She spread her front talons in an oddly hopeless gesture. Clay peered at the prey, which smelled like smoky duck. He wanted it, but he was afraid of getting any closer to peril. What if she burned him, even by accident? I'll be careful, she said, guessing his thoughts. I'll stay really still, I promise. She glanced around at the slumbering prisoners. I just thought it might be less obvious if I sat here instead of flying around you. She didn't sound like a monster. Clay couldn't put his quiet, couldn't put this quiet dragon together with the brutal killer he'd seen earlier that day. He scraped the duck toward him, then devoured it in two bites. It tasted like ash, ash and crunched strangely between his teeth. Oh dear, Peril said, that was fast. Do you want another one? I'm all right, Clay said. She scraped one claw across the rocks. Do you want me to go away? No, he said, as she looked up surprised. Stay and talk to me, he offered. Aren't you afraid of me now that you've seen what I can do? Of course I am, he said honestly, but you're still better company than the pigeons. All they want to talk about is nest design and who to poop on. Peril barked a laugh. She seemed much more subdued than she had been when they first met. He studied her face in the moonlight. Are, are you all right, he asked. Peril blinked several times fast instead of answering. She said, that was weird today, wasn't it? What was weird? The sand wing, horizon, the way he just gave up. She opened and closed her wings and Clay flinched. Why would he do that? Peril went on. It's poor form. I guess I should have pushed him away to make him keep fighting. Her majesty was pretty angry. At you, Clay said. That doesn't seem fair. Peril blinked again. Really? She said. It doesn't? She shook her head. No, the queen is right. It's my responsibility to make the fight exciting if the other dragon won't do it. Why do you do what she says? Clay asked. Do you like fighting? What he really wanted to ask was, do you like killing? But he was afraid of what the answer might be. Would he like killing if he'd been given the chance to do it over and over again with no consequences? Was that the kind of dragon he was supposed to be? Would he like it if he had to do it tomorrow in the arena? Of course, Peril said. I'm good at fighting and not much else. And she's my queen. I'm her champion. Why you? Clay asked, risking getting closer to his real question. What's wrong with you? No one else wants me, Peril said, matter of factly. No one can even, even touch me. You saw that. I was born with too much fire. Usually when dragons like me hatch, the sky wings drop them off the highest mountain peak. That's what my mother was going to do, but Queen Scarlet saved me and killed her to punish her. Her eyes went cold at the words of my mother. Wow, Clay said faintly. Yeah, said Peril. If you want to know everything, I burn up my twin in our I burned up my twin in our egg. I sucked all the fire out of him and scorched him to a crisp. She shrugged, but there was a wobbliness to, to her voice. I attacked the other eggs in my nest when I hatched, Clay said. It felt really strange to say that out loud. At least that's what the big dragons tell me. They said I tried to kill my nestmates. I don't remember it. Peril tilted her head. So maybe we were both born to kill other dragons, she said. Clay wished she didn't sound so happy about it. Maybe she's right. Maybe she's the monster I could be if I let myself. I don't really want to do that, he admitted. I like fighting, but the only thing I've ever killed is prey. Her majesty said I might as well follow my true nature, Peril said. That's how she raised me, letting me be myself, giving me dragons to kill. Maybe you'd be better if you could 
be who you really are. I hope that's not who I am, Clay said in the moonlight. Peril's expression changed and he realized he'd hurt her feelings. Not, not that, he stammered. Nice work, Clay. How are you going to finish this sentence? Not that there's anything wrong with being a killer or maybe, but it seems to be going great for you. I mean, maybe I was born that way, but does that mean I'm like that forever? I guess I hope I have a choice is all. I want to be who I want to be, not who I have to be, right? Do you ever, I mean, wouldn't you want to be different if you could be anyone? No, Peril said, clawing at the rock under her talons. I've accepted myself and I like myself this way. You should do the same thing. Something chattered far below them and Peril jumped. I'd better go, she said. Wait, Clay said, please, who's supposed to fight tomorrow? Can you talk to the queen? Tell her not to send in the night wing. He's not ready for the arena. Are you serious? Peril said. She'd be furious. She's so excited to see him fight. Tell her I volunteer instead, Clay blurted. Tell her I'm ready and I promise I'll make it exciting. Peril was already shaking her head. I can't. I'm forbidden to talk to you. She was really mad when she found out I visited you before. I guess you're not like the other prisoners. Clay paused, thinking that was strange. Why did Queen Scarlet care if Peril talked to him? But you came to see me anyway? She shuffled her talons and looked a little embarrassed. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, it didn't seem fair. I like talking to you. Her majesty never has time to talk to me. And my only other friend is old and tells the same stories over and over again. You're blazing. So she doesn't obey every order Queen Scarlet gives her? Good to know. He realized she was looking at him hopefully. Uh, he said, you're blazing too? Peril grinned, sharp white teeth flashing in the moonlight. That's what her majesty says. She likes me that way. I am and nobody else ever has until you. Yikes, Clay thought. He wasn't sure he did like her the way she was or that he wanted to be best friends with the dragon who was planning to kill him eventually. But there was something not entirely awful about Peril, an awkwardness and sadness that he kind of understood. And maybe there was a chance he could talk her out of the whole killing plan. Maybe that was why Queen Scarlet didn't want her talking to him. In the meanwhile, though, he had to focus on saving Starflight. Listen, he said, could you talk to her about Starflight anyway? What if you acted like you came up with it yourself? A mudwing is still something new, right? So send me in first and save him for later. Besides, if he dies in his first fight, that would be a waste, wouldn't it? He swallowed the lump that rose in his throat at the idea of Starflight dying. You think he would? Peril said gazing out at the circle of prisoners, even with the bright light of the moons, it was hard to see the dark lump of dragon on Starflight's pedestal. Can't he use his powers, reading minds and all that? Poor Starflight. Clay wondered if a normal Nightwing raised around the night, other Nightwings would already have his powers by now. He didn't want Peril and Queen Scarlet to know that Starflight was powerless, but he didn't want them to risk Starflight's life because they thought he could do something special. They're a little unpredictable, he has he hazarded. He's not full grown, you know. He's still learning how to use them. Although, of course, they're very scary when they work. He hoped the Skywings had no more information about Nightwing powers than Starflight Scrolls did. Oh, Peril said, that makes sense. Her tail twitched over the talons as she thought. Clay tried to sidle a bit closer to the edge, away from her blistering heat. All right, she said finally. I'll try. Thank you, Clay said. Peril spread her wings to fly away and then hesitated, looking at him. You wouldn't do that, would you? Clay tried to think about what she meant. Kill yourself like that, she said, the way Horizon did? She coughed and a small ring of smoke puffed out of her snout. Clay had no idea what he would do if he ever had to fight Peril. It sounded even more terrifying than swimming down the underground river. He met her eerie blue eyes and realized that she looked very worried. I don't think so, he said truthfully. He couldn't imagine choosing to die that way, and he didn't think he was brave enough to do it either. Oh, good, she said. I'd much rather kill you fair and square. Well, good night. She leaped up in the air and beat her wings, sending a wave of heat over Clay's scales. He felt very unsettled as he watched her spiral down to the arena. Peril was the first dragon he met outside the mountain, if you didn't count Queen Scarlet. Maybe she wasn't as strange as he thought. Maybe switching between friendly conversation and violence was normal for a dragon, but somehow he didn't think so. Was she right about his true nature? If he'd been raised like her, killing dragons and feeding the monster inside him 
Maybe he'd be less worried all the time. Maybe he needed to accept that part of him like she had, but would his friends still like him? Would he be more or less worthy of the prophecy that way? One thing was for sure. Whenever he did end up in the arena, he'd find out how he felt about killing pretty fast.